Good, so we'll move on to applying our static earthquake load. This is on page 19 of the workbook. So from the loads ribbon tab, under environmental grouping, select static earthquake. And we'll create two user cases. So click new twice. I'll zoom in a bit so you can see it. And we're gonna use the user input. So we'll leave that as user. And we'll just come over and input our X, Y, and Z G values. So for E1, X will be 0 0.3, Y will be 0 0.2, and Z will be 0 0.3. And for our E2 earthquake case, X will be 0, Y will be 0 0.2, and Z will be 0. So in our first earthquake case, we're applying both horizontal and vertical components. In our second earthquake case, we're just applying the vertical component. And with that, we can click OK. Next, we'll apply our wind load. So again, on the loads ribbon tab in the environmental grouping, select wind. With the wind inputs, we do have to update some basic information in the top area before we can define our individual load cases. So our ground elevation for wind will be negative 10 feet. This input is defining where the ground is in reference to our A00 point. So we're saying that the ground is 10 feet below point A00. Our global coordinates for A00 in this model are 0, 0, 0. So because we have that at the origin, we have to take into account where the ground is compared to that origin point. Our wind shape factors we will leave as one. All segments will be exposed to wind. Our wind exposure factor will be left as zero, and our wind application method will be left as projected. Now down in the wind cases section, click new one time to define a new W1 load case, and select the type as ASCE 716. We will use this code to define our wind load. With that selected, click on the modify button to open the ASCE dialog. We're assigning the W1 load case in the global X direction, and the only input we'll change in here is the exposure category to D. We only have piping in this model, no structure, so we won't use the structure tab. And with that, we can click OK, which defines our wind load. This creates a pressure versus height profile for our wind load, which we'll review in just a moment. But let's create a second wind case with the same inputs, but the direction being the global Z. So we can select the row for W1, and on the bottom of this dialog, click the duplicate button, which is just a duplicate. So we have two exact same wind loads right now. And what we'll do is for the W2 wind load case, we'll apply it in a different direction, in the global Z direction. And with that, we can click OK. We've now added snow, earthquake, and wind loads to our model, all static loads, and we can review them in our input listing. So back on our home ribbon tab, under the reports grouping, we can select input listing. I'll move all of my sub reports over to the left column, and I'm just gonna select the load summary report and move it over to the right column of selected reports, and I'll click okay. If I scroll down, I first come to my earthquake load cases section, which is just a summary of the two earthquake loads I defined. I then come to my wind load cases, where I have the basic information that was input at the top of the dialog, and then a wind case W1 with the pressure versus height profile that was created, applied in the global X axis. And then my W2 load case with the same pressure versus height profile because all of the inputs were the same, but this is being applied in the Z axis. And if I scroll down just a bit further at the end, 
I have my snow load data as well. So when done reviewing the load summary input report, we can close out. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.